So thanks a lot for, for being here today. Uh, we will discuss uh, the work we have been doing in Uppsala uh, for uh, the last year uh, with all the colleagues that are surrounding me. And uh, to introduce myself, I'm Eric Capo, a postdoc researcher working in Barcelona in Spain in this Institute of Marine Science. And I'm actually sitting at Uppsala in Stefan Papilson uh, lab. Today I will show you uh, not data, but <laughs> attempt to get data uh, from the Baltic Sea sediment, where we try to get sedimentary ancient metagenomes. And yeah, I call this uh, talk "Storm Between Fun and Despair" because uh, wow, it was a long year for us, uh, even for something that was at the start a, a side project uh, of my postdoc. But we had some fun, so I will try to show you that uh, anyway. And I will uh, try to convince you uh, that the society is actually quite useful to, to try to solve problems. So most of you know what is the sedimentary ancient DNA approach. Basically, you go in an environment. Us, we are going to aquatic environment, and we take sediment cores from the bottom of the aquatic system, so either a lake or or the ocean, and from those sediments that archive uh, biological markers over time, we can extract the DNA. And the theory is you have much more a uh, long DNA fragment in upper sediment compared to uh, lower sediment where the DNA tends to degrade with time. You can uh, still extract DNA molecules from different sediment layers that can have different datation. And you can use that to do either uh, PCR amplification of the seq marker or uh, try, try to sequence all DNA uh, from those sediments. Obviously, one of the important parts of this process is the bioinformatics, because you can either uh, get fragments that uh, give you an indication of what is living in the sediment, but also what is not living in the sediment. And of course, this uh, applies to mostly microbes or benthic communities and not to plant DNA and megafauna DNA. Here, I will uh, talk about this project that we call Ancillus, that is actually the name of the Baltic Sea a long time ago, and where we want to investigate the replacement of Baltic Sea microbiome over time. And the PIO of this project are my, me, Anders Andersen from KTH Silab Lab in Stockholm, and Elinor Antren for, from Southern University. And briefly to explain why we, we started this project, uh, I met uh, Anders Andersson a few years ago here at Uppsala, actually in this building, and he talked about Baltic Sea uh, microbiome from the modern sample. He got a lot of mics from there, uh, study for 10 years, 20 years there, maybe. And uh, he talked about uh, this hypothesis that the uh, microbiome we have now in the Baltic Sea is a brackish microbiome that is actually shared with other uh, places in the world, uh, meaning that you may have actually dispersal of bacterial cells over very long distance that could actually uh, create this core microbiome of brackish environment. And because he's working on modern sample, I, I wanted to challenge with you this idea, uh, with him this idea about uh, this. Uh, replacement of the communities and try to see if we could actually detect bacteria. Uh, genome that evolved from the stage where the Baltic Sea was a freshwater uh, to a brackish uh, environment. So we had these two hypotheses. And very approximately, the, the Baltic Sea was a lake 8,000 years ago and became brackish uh, after this, uh, this time. So the idea was to take sediment cores uh, in, in quite good basin from the Baltic Sea, where we know that we can have a, a good stratigraphy, thanks to the work of Elinor and Thomas Andren, uh, and try to get DNA from that. We have a large list of collaborators in this project, including Stefan Dapilson, who is the host uh, uh, at Uppsala in SLU, where I'm staying for one year. Uh, Laura Pardushi, who, who was my host in uh, Uppsala University, even if she's uh, in Sapienza University in Rome now. And one of the key actors of this uh, work is also Kevin Nota, a PhD student of both Laura and Stefan, and who is actually the one knowing what is the library preparation step for metagenesis. We, we had uh, 
also Thomas, Ines, Maurice, Yaron, Anushri, and Jordan. And sorry, I completely forgot Grayson uh, in this piece, uh, in this project. One key question uh, for us uh, in parallel to uh, can we reconstruct the past community from the Baltic Sea is actually what makes the DNA pool in sedimentary archive. And this is a topic that has been investigated for, for the last 10 years and even more, I think. And this year we wrote a, a review uh, paper with um, marie Marco, Isabel, Linda, and Stefan about that with this figure made by Marine, uh, my wife, where um, we illustrate actually what makes this pool. And if you look at the deep sediment part, you can see that most of us, we know that. This is mostly dead cells with DNA inside viable cells that are either dormant or surviving uh, in those low energy ecosystem, but also DNA bound to particles of pre DNA. It's hard to say uh, when you extract the DNA where the DNA comes from, but because ancient DNA fragments they have postmodern damage, you could be able to differentiate them uh, if you map them to reference genome. This is what we try to do here. And this implies that we try to don't fragment the DNA pool we extract from DNA before doing the library preparation. And I will talk about that a bit. This project that started as a, a small project uh, is a no link with Phyto Arc project uh, that was uh, granted by uh, in Germany for Anke Kramp, Laura Epp, Miklos Balint, and Inga Enz where they actually want to look at the historical phytoplankton uh, changes in the Baltic Sea over the same time period than us. So we merged our interest and we, we started to discuss about uh, how to share sediment and, and ID uh, over the Baltic Sea. So for this specific project on Silus, Elinor and Thomas, they went to the Baltic Sea uh, 7 September 2020 with this Electra uh, boat. And they catch very long sediment records from there. So on the right part of this slide, you can actually see uh, the core on the top right, the white uh, equipment, and the core liner has a six meter of uh, white pipe. They brought back the sediment to the lab and actually to Stockholm University. Uh, and we went with Kevin and Tim, that was a master student in Laura groups uh, last year. Uh, we went there to subsample the sediment. So you can see on the middle photo here, uh, all look the sediment. And you have four core because the, the core were cut and actually they overlap uh, with each other. So during this day, we did subsample something like 50 sediment layers from the sediment. But in the lab, uh, we extracted 25 samples uh, with the same interval uh, for the metagenomic analysis. What we wanted to do in uh, the ancient DNA lab at Uppsala University, that is uh, the lab of Laura Pardushi and another researcher, Katya Gushanki, is to extract the DNA uh, from the Baltic Sea sediment and to do this test named library preparation. That's something when you work with modern uh, metagenomics, you just send your DNA extract to a sequencing company, and usually they can do that for you but they don't like ancient DNA samples, so <laughs> they don't want to do, to do that for us. And actually, uh, I understand because it was uh, very hard to do, and it's still very hard to do for us, so we have to do that ourselves. And what is actually the library preparation? So I have a specific slide about that later, and I'm really not an expert in that, but basically you need to put some uh, additional nucleotide sequence bind to your DNA of interest, and that are adapters and index. We use a protocol modified from Caroway, uh, 2018, that is also modified from Meyer and Kirchhoff protocol that is quite famous in ancient DNA uh, analysis. And I forgot to say that, but we, we use for DNA extraction the poor soil kit, and not poor soil pro, but the kit that was there before. This library preparation step is the one we are struggling with. And here you can see all the steps uh, of this process, including blood, blood head repair, adapter ligation to the DNA fragment, adapter filling, primary amplification, and indexing PCR. Adding that, 
after all this step, we also purify our uh, index PCR uh, index ligated DNA, and we actually use magnetic beads. So we did a typo. Uh, to remove the adapter dimers. And let's say the potential adapter dimers, but for us, there are not potential, they are there. <laughs> you will see. Once you finish that, what you expect to have is a pool of DNA between 100 base pair and three, 400 base pair. Even a bit more than 100 base pair, actually, because uh, when you add the adapter and index, it's increased the size of your fragment. If you have this kind of library, you can send that for sequencing. And here, what you can see is one of the first gel we, we got during the preparation. So it's after all the steps I mentioned uh, before the purification. And from the left to the right, uh, you can see the index ligated DNA uh, from the old sediment layers to the recent sediment layers, stopping uh, three samples before the end, and the three last samples are negative control. You can see the DNA layer on the right uh, with the size of each fragment. And basically, we saw that with the older sample, we got a lot of adapter dimers. And when you increase with uh, more and more uh, overlying sediment, you may get a bit more uh, indexed ligated DNA. Adapter dimer is what you don't want to have. And here you see that you have a lot. We had a lot, um, but we were happy to get at least some uh, index uh, ligated DNA for some sample. So we tried. Uh, it was like March, April this year. We tried to do a pool of all the samples and see if we catch actually something uh, out of it. And after uh, pulling all of those uh, index uh, DNA, we purified and we used magnetic beads. And we got this kind of, um, of gel photo, pulling the pool on the, <laughs> on the gel. I guess most of you, you got this kind of photo once, I hope I'm not the uh, only one. Um, that means we have nothing or very close to nothing. We don't see anything, but we may have a smear of DNA fragment that is very, very low that we can't see in this gel on the left part. So the, I, I put the sample just close to the ladder on the left. And we tried two times to do this pool. And first time we got the same answer. The second photo I don't have because I think I was so despair that I actually <laughs> even didn't take it. And this is all that I put, I put this photo on this slide because I was like, okay, so what should we do now? Because during this time, I, I don't show the protocol, but Kevin uh, think very hard to uh, optimize it. Uh, a lot, and I tried to help, but uh, let's say it was uh, without him, it would have been even worse. So we tried, we tried hard, and it was probably May uh, this year, and we were a bit disturbed about uh, what to do. So hopefully, it was a year where we created the Stade DNA Society. Also, January this year, uh, so we we use the mailing list of the society to contact the number and say, hey. <laughs> We have an exciting project for you. Just come by and help us to do it. And I think I was honest on my email saying uh, we fail and we need uh, more expertise or we need time to continue that. Um, so we called them and a few answer. Uh, and few, but actually people answer because we said uh, we don't have any money. So just come with your money and help us. So we sent this email and we went for a summer break. Uh, I went to the Atlantic Ocean, it was very nice. So I had time to relax. We did some interview with people for during the summer. And it's not like we say no to people. We just say, if you want to come, just come to Uppsala and uh, we will try to see uh, how we, we do stuff. And then in October, uh, two months ago, we, we welcome uh, three uh, researchers that are Jordan von Eggers, Ines Barinesia Angeles, and uh, Grayson Huston uh, that joined Uppsala uh, to help us in the lab. It was a great time. Uh, it was very cool because with Kevin, we spent uh, one year uh, at EBC. So it's a building where we are working and we were quite isolated with the COVID. So it was good to see new faces also around and the uh, DNA expert uh, at this time. So they came to Uppsala and uh, we, started, we, we started to think about this project. And we, we think, uh, we thought harder. 
uh, furthering the mini symposium that are, uh, was organized at Uppsala. Uh, it was organized because we got the PhD students at Turin and we realized that, okay, we should do something a bit bigger and invite more people uh, to come. So we, we had researchers giving us advice about what to do, including Mikhail, Pete, and uh, Alexandra uh, that were there. And um, after they left, uh, we continued to, to discuss uh, a bit. So here you can see the, the office of Kevin. It's actually in this office that we created the Society for Real. Uh, we had all ideas uh, going out of, of this office. So we are sad that we will have to leave it soon. It, it, in this photo is teaching us uh, what is library preparation. We also had some substation with Mathilde Bourreau, that is a PhD student in France, uh, and she's trying to do the same thing than us uh, from marine sediment. And I hope she will have success. So what are the change we did in our protocol? And I say that without showing you the original protocol, but basically we thought we should extract more DNA from the same sediment layers and upscale our volume of DNA template for adaptor ligation. That is one of the first steps of the library preparation. And in parallel, we did uh, try to adapt a bit uh, concentration of the reagent in the different steps, including the adapter concentration, but also the ligase. So we went back to the lab. And when I say we, I say mostly uh, Kevin, uh, Ines, Jordan, and Grayson. And I actually am actually here in one picture, but I went two days in the lab at the end. So it's not very fair, but uh, I think it's a cool photo with Jordan. So I wanted to put it here. So they spend a lot of time in the lab, uh, three, four, five weeks, six weeks, I don't remember. And they did work hard, and I think they learned uh, a lot in the lab with Kevin uh, and between them. And we did the same process. So we used DNA extracted to actually uh, get library out. And we got more um, uh, positive results. That means ligated, uh, indexed ligated DNA. You can see from the left to the right is from the most ancient to the most recent. And you can see that, yeah, I, actually in the recent sample that are 1,000 or 2,000 years old, we get uh, this kind of size fragment we are expecting without the adapter dimer. So it was not that bad. Great. And I want to remember you here that we, we did not fragment the DNA. Uh, that is uh, something we didn't do because we wanted to catch function DNA fragment. Here, I don't have any uh, photo. I didn't put it, but we, we see in few gels that we actually have a lot of high molecular weight DNA uh, in some samples, not in all of them. The most uh, all sample, we have one nanogram of DNA or even less. We should not have a lot of high molecular weight, but we think we have microbial cells still living or dormant in the sediment, and we could maybe catch a bit more DNA uh, using a different approach. So we did work hard. We, this time we used another approach. Instead of putting everything together for purification, we did a pool with a good sample, so the one with no adapter dimer, with a bad sample, another pool, and with the negative control, another pool. And we felt, <laughs> we really thought we, we success at the end, because uh, the first pool of good sample, we got a, a quite high concentration of DNA, seven nanograms per microliter. So we were like, okay, good. Uh, and we were struggling with Kevin because he wanted to use magnetic beads to remove adapter dimers. And I said, no, 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 we don't do that. We keep the pool at, at it is. So what you see on this gel is actually uh, P1 good is the pool with a good sample. P1 bad, the bad. P1 control uh, is the control sample. And after P, uh, the pool two is the one Jordan did uh, the last day. Uh, it's exactly the same than the pool number one except that we put everything together and we use magnetic bits to remove adapter dimer. And after we did everything, we realized that actually, even in the good sample pool, uh, we got mostly adapter dimer. And that means if we actually use the magnetic bit on this one, we will uh, discard most of the DNA concentration we got with qubit. And I believe, I really believe there is a smear in my first uh, P1 good. I see a smear on this gel uh, that is very faint, but it's there. So we didn't do anything with that. It's still in the freezer at EBC. And uh, I will explain you what I think we should do later, but 
mostly it's index adapter dimer. So we can't sequence that, otherwise we will have 99% of adapter dimers in, in the sequence and we will like, waste 5,000 euros. So what I think we should do, and uh, this is only my uh, thought, so maybe I'm wrong, but I think we should actually try to fragment the DNA. Not my suggestion, actually. Uh, Kevin suggested that a few weeks ago, and I think it's a wise way to do. We fragment the DNA, so we can't really do that in the on-chain DNA lab. I will do that in Stefan at the Pixon lab. I use a ready-to-use kit uh, through like a library, or I don't know, uh, from this DNA to do adapter ligation, so it may be a bit more straightforward and see if I can get something out using the MySec we have uh, in the building just uh, there. If we see something, if we see sequence from bacterial uh, uh, genomes that are relevant, my idea would be to combine the modern library we get from the fragmented DNA with this pool of ancient, potential ancient DNA we got uh, with the first approach. And we just sequence that on Nova run. Obviously, the other plan is to get 16F metabaconing data, but it's not as exciting as getting a sediment metagenome. And the plan C, or let's say the parallel plan, is also to share our sample with uh, Anke, Laura, Miki, and Inga from the Phyto Arc project, so they can uh, run stuff to uh, screen for phytoplankton species there, or phytoplankton colonies. And overall, it was not actually a bad, uh, the bad time we had in the lab uh, all together or in the office. Because I think Jordan, Ines, and Grayson, uh, they had the opportunity to meet very interesting Sabadian people during the symposium, but also later uh, during uh, their stay. They were trained in the lab by Kevin, and we also trained them in bioinformatics for both metagenomics approach using mapping, but also uh, my approaches, mine. The one I'm using uh, to detect genes in metagenome and this kind of stuff. And now we have uh, Ines working with uh, Marco and, and high and colleagues on the Black Sea metagenomes. Uh, and we are writing something interesting about that, about how macrometylation actually changed over the last 10,000 years. And I see Kildip on my uh, screen, so you are not forgetting, don't worry. Uh, so we are working on this manuscript. And with Jordan, we are also working on metagenome from Lake Econ, that is a lake close to Uppsala, uh, in which Stefan and colleagues, they got metagenome. And it seems that we have interesting finding also there. And if I'm not uh, wrong, both metagenome were obtained ah. with fragmented DNA. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, if you look at other marine, marine metagenome, even from Linda or other groups, all of them were fragmented. We didn't find any uh, library that were obtained from non-fragmented DNA. So it, for me, it's not like sedimentary ancient metagenome from marine system exists still. Uh, and this is what we tried to get, but uh, I'm not sure it's even possible. Obviously, Kevin and Hai, and Hai we had a lot of fun with the students uh, around, and we, we learned a lot also having them uh, with us. So it was very great. So I, I would like to thank them, but also uh, Laura and Stefan that are uh, our advisor here at Uppsala. And obviously I would like to thank the, the CEDA DNA Society for, for the last year because we we did uh, learn stuff during seminars and we did have a lot of interesting discussion and, and I hope we can continue that uh, over the last, uh, the next year. So yes, thanks for listening. I will stop sharing and I will stop recording. <laughs>